Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fit and Lit podcast. I am your host, Bridget Koenig, and I have a really special one today for you. I heard people talk about these kind of podcasts as like big sis advice, and I love that. So I'm going to be your big sis today and tell you the five things that I wish I knew when I started my fitness journey. Um, oh, I am drinking some water. So if you hear me slurping, um, I'm drinking out of my hydro jug. I've been really trying to drink more water. I feel like it's something that I have been like always trying to drink more water. Like, oh man, like I just have such a hard time drinking water and it's something so stupid. Like, I don't know why it's so hard. So I've been back on my hydro jug game. This is half a gallon uh, jug and they have some really cute tumblers. I know everyone's like obsessed with like the Stanley cups right now, but the hydro jug tumbler is uh leak proof and they're sold out and I'm sad I missed out again. This is the second time they've dropped them and I missed out. But if you want some money off, uh, there's a link down in the description. If you want to get your own, they have like really cute covers and stuff too, for these jugs that have like a strap. Uh, so you can like, you don't have to hold it with your hand. You can just like wear it like a cross body and, um, they're super cool. So me taking lots of water breaks and I don't know why I'm speaking so fast. Actually I do. I just did a cardio kickboxing class and I had like super crazy high energy going on around me. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, like I still have like some endorphins going and Oh, it feels good. It feels really good. But I'm going to slow it down. (sighs) And let's start with number one on the list of the five things that I wish I knew when I started my fitness journey. The first thing I have my little list here, so I don't forget is that it takes longer than six weeks to get abs. I know that might seem like common sense now, but I grew up with Cosmopolitan magazine, 17 magazine. There was no Instagram. There was, there was Facebook, MySpace and blogs, but it wasn't like what it is today where everyone's preaching about nutrition advice and different diets. Like you had to manually search for these different blogs and read magazines and, um, a lot of the things in those magazines were like, uh, like one week eating plan. If you eat like this, exactly like this, follow this plan for six weeks, you're going to be toned and skinny and, uh, you're going to have like the most feminine body and, uh, six weeks is not a long time. And a lot of these diets were like crash diets and, uh, you know, being in high school, was kind of when I first really became aware and wanted to change my, my body, my fitness journey, really like my fitness journey, not like my weight loss and body dysmorphia journey, but my fitness journey really started my senior year of high school. Uh, what happened? I think I just started, oh, I started kickboxing that time around that time. And I started running a little bit. I was babysitting for this family and the mom was like really into running marathons. And she had invited me to a cardio kickboxing class and I had gone with her and completely fell in love. And that's really when I started, started working out. That wasn't part of my sport in high school, middle school, I did color guard. So I didn't really play a sport. So that was really cool. But again, like my, when I started viewing my body differently and like wanting to change things and not feeling feminine or skinny enough, I had magazines to look to like Cosmopolitan, 17 magazine and, uh, different blogs that like, again, you have to search for. So of course I'm, how can I lose 10 pounds? How can I lose 15 pounds? And I wasn't like, I was in high school. I wasn't chunky. Like I was, I was muscular. I've always had big legs, big butt, uh, very strong 
but again I wanted to be skinny and toned which I hate that I hate that toned like a lot of people don't I just hate that term I I don't think people know quite what it means (laughs) uh anyway we'll we'll talk about that another time but I discovered bodybuilding.com around that time also, Uh, but everything was like on a set time limit, like six weeks, 12 weeks, 10 weeks, 10 pounds in 10 weeks and fit like a fitness journey, like losing weight or gaining muscle or whatever is going to take a long time and it's going to be part of your life for the rest of your life. And I was always just trying to do something super quick, super, you know, crazy, follow these meal plans that were in magazines. They know nothing about me and my preferences, but again, you have to eat exactly like that. And girls were always supposed to be skinny and weight loss was always the number one concern. That was always what everyone was trying to do in magazines, lose weight, lose weight, get skinny or get skinny or get smaller. And, uh, yeah, I wish I knew that it takes longer than six weeks to get abs. <laughs> Number two, just because I ate a piece of cake doesn't mean I fell off track or that I'm a quitter. Again, like I would try to follow these meal plans that were written in these magazines and they were so meal res- like calorie restrictive that of course I'm going to want to eat something or I would go to a party because I was in high school college and would want to eat a piece of cake or you know have a sweet or something and then I would just be so upset with myself and I would think that I was a quitter and then I would have to start again rather than just pick off where I left pick up where I left off and just keep going so we're told that they're like bad foods and that they're like good foods when that's like not even the case at all there are so many foods around us and a lot of them are cultural a lot of them are fun foods and they're meant to be foods that we eat when we're socializing celebrating and there are foods that we probably should eat more of uh like whole foods we should definitely eat more whole foods foods that aren't in packages foods that have one or two ingredients listed and these bad foods are usually things like cakes cookies fast food and they're not necessarily bad and what I would do is like completely cut everything out and again leading back to the first one uh you know weight loss was always the goal always 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 not happiness Not that, just being skinny, being skinny. So oftentimes, especially in the beginning of my journey, I would cut out entire food groups like carbs or fat. Like, and that is just not one, it's not healthy. And two, you're not going to get the results that you want at all. Now, you may be thinking or listening, or if you know, if you've heard me talk about how I don't eat, meat, dairy, or eggs. I don't consider that a food group. I'm talking about like no carbs, no protein, no fat, that kind of thing, like keto or um, what's the other one? Because low fat was really popular when I was younger. So a lot of people were afraid of fat. So everything in the grocery store was low fat, low fat, low fat, diet this, diet that. And that just meant no fat. And then whenever keto started being really popular, what, like maybe um, like six, seven years ago, keto started getting really popular where people were cutting out carbs like completely. And I mean, people still do keto and no fat, which I think is just so, oh, it's so horrible, like cutting out a whole parts like entire macronutrient food groups oh just uh man it's it's rough and I'm not going to get into that right now but I would think that I had to eat so low calorie 
um, a lot of the times, especially on bodybuilding.com, they would be, you know, how to look like a bikini model. And these diets would be like 1200 calories. And I was just trying to do that just to like live. 1200 calories is not enough food. And it's part of why I didn't see the results that I was expecting. I was working out at one point, like two, three times a day. Sometimes I was teaching uh, classes specifically like cardio kickboxing and boot camp classes. And then I would go, you know, do my cardio in the morning. And then I would go to the gym and lift weights. I was lifting so much. I basically like lived at the gym and it was amazing. But again, my goal was like, be skinny, be skinny, be skinny. And I'm kicking myself because if I had just eaten more, like as soon as I stopped eating such low calories and ate like real food, like my body like swelled up so much. I gained like 20 pounds in what felt like a week because my body just was so depleted that I just like puffed up and like, but my muscles were so full. And I was like thinking, if I had eaten this much, like I would be so buff right now, but all my focus was on being skinny, being skinny, being skinny and eating as little as I possibly can. And I, that's a reason why I was not seeing results. Like nothing was changing because my body was like literally starving. So I wish I knew that I can eat cake and that I can eat fun foods every, one, every once in a while and to eat more than 1200 calories. Another one is mental health is key. Mental health is key. Thinking about yourself in a respectful way changes everything. The reason why I wanted to be skinny, skinny, skinny and toned or whatever and, you know, be a size, as little of a size as I could was because I hated myself. I did not like the way I looked, but learning that I am more than my looks and that my body is a gift and to have respectful friends, res be respected in relationships, having boundaries, being happy in general and not trying to prove to everybody that I'm worth something was like a big, big step. I would try to like prove myself all the time to people or try to look a certain way to improve, impress somebody. And I'm talking about like body and dress the way I dressed too. Or like I would do things that I didn't necessarily want to do or agree with, but I would do it anyway because of peer pressure or because I just wanted to be liked. And so when I changed my mental health, when I took care of myself and understood and respected my body, respected myself, that's when things really, really, really started to change. Because number four is that every body is different. When I got pregnant, I was so afraid of gaining too much weight or not being able to quote unquote, snap back after I had my daughter and my son. But when I realized how much my body could do, like I could grow a human, like a full human, like my body was growing a human. My body was feeding this human. My, when I was breastfeeding, exclusively breastfeeding for six months, like my body was this other bodies like full life source and that like really shifted things for me because I realized that it's not just me that I'm affecting like when I talk poorly about my body there's other people listening there's especially as my kids got older when I talk poorly about my body like they're listening and because I have a daughter um I don't I don't I 
still don't see it, but people would say like, oh, she looks just like you. I think my son looks more like me, but that's not the point. When somebody says like, oh, your daughter looks just like you and your daughter hears that, I just look, I look just like my mom. And then your mom is standing in front of the mirror saying, I hate this about myself. I hate this about myself. My eyes are too close together. My nose is too big. My lips are too small. My chin is too big. Then your daughter's like, I look just like her. My chin is too big. My eyes are too close together. My nose is too big. My lips are too small. It's so it trickles down. And when I started to learn to respect my body and just know that I don't have to snap back. I grew a whole freaking human. I fed this human with my body, with what I was eating. Why should I have to look a certain way? Like none of it makes sense. So getting pregnant and having... Um, my daughter helped me so much in the way that I viewed my body. So I'm very thankful to that, but I wish I knew how to do that before I had her. I wish that I was in a better mental space when it comes to the relationship I had with my body. So because everybody is different, everybody holds fat differently and shows muscle in different places. You might know somebody that they've had abs like their whole life. You can see each individual abdominal muscle and you have been working super hard and can't see any, or you have been working upper body for the longest time and you still don't even have boulder shoulders. But this person over here worked out one time last month and their shoulders are freaking beautiful. Or you, you know, you like the way that they look or someone has a big butt and you've been doing squats every day for three years and your butt barely has a bump to it. Like everybody holds muscle differently. Everyone holds fat. Everyone loses fat in different places first. And that's just kind of how it is. You can't change genetics. And a lot of people will be like, well, you can't blame genetics all the time. There's someone screaming outside. I think they're just drunk people messing around, hopefully, (laughs) but you can't, you can't change your genetics. And like I said, like a lot of people will be like, well, it is a big part and, um, you know, you can't blame your genetics for the way that you look like you have to put in the work and yes, I get that, but there is a certain point to where you're just, some people are going to have to work so hard to be able to see abs and some people aren't going to have to do like hardly any work. Same thing with legs. I'm really fortunate that uh, big butts are trending right now because they weren't in the early 2000s. And uh, I was made fun of for having a big butt, but now look who's laughing, right? Like I could, I don't have to do too much and my butt and my legs are really strong and hold a lot of muscle where my upper body doesn't, where some people are backwards and their upper body holds a lot of muscle and they lose muscle in their lower body quicker. So just being aware of that, that everybody's shaped differently and everybody is beautiful and there's no, like there's no right or wrong body. And that's, that was a huge, huge wake up call for me is that there's no right or wrong body. Not every body is different. The last thing, number five is that consistency is more important and to stick to the basics. Don't change programs every week. I'm someone who gets bored or if I don't see results, I'll just change programs and it's only been like a week. So I'll do like one week of this program, then change to a different program, then start doing something else and then start doing something else. And um, (laughs) that's not how you're going to get your results. You're going to do the same thing week after week after week, do the same exercises. If you're weightlifting, you're going to be doing the same routine for probably usually it's four to six weeks is one like uh, session or program length. So you're going to be doing the same thing week after week after week, and you're going to slowly increase your weights And that's how you're going to see results. And I wish I knew that because again, like I said, I would do squats one week, then deadlifts the next week, and then 
go hiking or something, which is cool, but I was chasing results and I wasn't seeing any. What I would suggest for me, you know, the five things I wish I knew, what I wish I knew before I started was to pick a program that has like three days of something I have to do. Then I would pick two other days where I could do whatever I wanted. So I would choose one day, maybe I want to go swimming instead of weightlifting or do my cardio kickboxing. Or one day, maybe I just really wanted to do legs again or try a new exercise or do yoga or, you know, go mountain biking or rollerblading and call that as my workout just to do something different and something fun to mix it up. But consistency is like so important. If you go to the gym every day for a week and then take the next two weeks off and then go one day and then take a few days off and then go for a whole week again every day, it's not, you're not being consistent and your body's just kind of all over the place. And that goes with eating too. So consistency, like eating the same thing every day, week after week after week, that's when you're going to know what is working and what is not. So if you're eating the same thing, if you're eating the same amount of calories every day, you're eating similar foods every day, and you notice that your weight's not changing, then you know what to change. And same thing with working out and exercising. Like if you are doing the same thing and you're not seeing results, then you can change it. Then you can make things harder. Then you can add something else in that's going to help. But if you're changing it every day or every week or just not showing up, then that's when things get really hard. And with food, again, if you are eating like just breakfast one day and then the next day you have like six meals and then the next day you have a big breakfast and a big lunch and then the next day you have, you don't eat very much. And then the next day you eat a whole bunch of food. Your body doesn't know what to do, first of all. And second of all, you when you want to change or start seeing different results, you're not gonna know what to change because everything is different and you you, like you really can't know where to start when I work with nutrition clients uh, I require two weeks of consistent logging so food logging for that two weeks and a lot of the time the first thing that we'll ever work on is consistency with food so I'll see one day with clients that's like 800 calories then the next day it's 3200 calories then the next day it's 1800 then the next day we're at a thousand then we're at 3200 again So the goal is to make everything super consistent so that we know what to change. So again, I am taking nutrition clients. I am doing personalized training programs also virtually. So if you're having trouble staying consistent and you need some accountability, I'm your girl and send me a message. Everything's linked down in the description box below or in the show notes, however you want to look at them and you can apply and we can work together to stay consistent. So that's all I have for today. I just think that it's super. Oh no, that is not it for today. How could I forget? I asked you on Instagram, which by the way, my Instagram is Bridget.Koenig and my other one is only.if.we.vibe. So only if we vibe. The only if we vibe page is just bunch of random stuff that I want to play or that I want to share and it's just silly it doesn't really have anything to do with fitness or nutrition and just like more life just fun stuff so go follow me on there if you want to know more Bridget Koenig Bridget.Koenig on Instagram is more fitness and nutrition and that kind of thing so and business so I asked on Instagram what you wish you knew when you started your journey and I got three answers. The first one is being strong should have been my goal the entire time and that it's not linear. And this is super important too. When I kind of touched on this too, about how I wish that I wasn't so focused on losing weight and being skinny. Like (laughs) I, I so wish I didn't do that. Like I would be so jacked right now. If I focus on being strong, I'd probably be able to be doing like 500 pull-ups, I'd be able to squat like a thousand pounds. No, I'm just kidding. But I would be like way stronger and 
I wasted so much time just being so negative and just trying to lose weight. And I really wish I didn't do that because my focus was in the wrong, the wrong area. So yeah. And that it's not linear. Yes. You're going to do really good. Your, your performance is going to enhance and then you're going to probably, something's going to happen. You're, oh my goodness. You're going to not get enough sleep one day. (laughs) And then when you go to the gym, your progress might dip a little bit that day. Then you're going to go the next week and it's going to go strong again. Then maybe it's the holidays. You ate a little bit too much. So you are a little bit more lethargic in the gym. Then it's a new year. You're motivated again. Like there's like going to be these dips, but if, as long as your progress is going strong, like the, the average line is going linear, then you're good. Now, if you start to, you know, go up and down and your, your average line is plateaued or straight through the middle, then we got a problem, but you're going to have ups and downs with everything. And it's really important to just keep moving forward and to keep being consistent. So here's another, Oh, this is a good one. Not everyone around you is going to support you or cheer you on. Do it for you. Yes. There are going to be people in your life. This is a really great way to find out who's a really good friend too. So if you have a group of friends And you start changing the way you do things. So working out and eating healthy, if you didn't do that before, there's going to be people who take it really personally as an attack against them because of their insecurities. There's going to be people who think that you are changing or, and they're not willing to change with you or to change the way that they treat you. Not everyone is going to support you and you have to do it for you. You can't have any other reason. Like you can't do it. So I look good for my husband or I look better naked or, I mean, if you, if you want to look better naked for you, like that's great. But if you're doing this for anybody other than you, it's, you're going to have a really hard time. And that's something else that I struggled with too. So I'm glad that one came up. Um, another one is that this is so positive. This girl, she's always so positive. She'll, we'll be doing kickboxing and she'll be like, I'm like murder the bag. Like just for this, this round, I want you to go as hard as you can picture something, someone like a zombie, a vampire, or like just picture someone. I don't know. It's none of my business, but just like, like go like kill the bag. Right. And she'll be smiling the whole time, like super happy. So (laughs) I thought this was funny. I, she said that she could do push-ups the right way. I wish that I knew that I could do push-ups the right way. And I just think that's so positive because a lot of the time, like a lot of responses that we get are so negative, like not everyone's going to um, support you, that it's not linear. And she's like, I didn't know that I could do push-ups the right way. And I just think that's such a, another thing too, is that you can focus on performance. Your, like what you can do, like something that I was, I still cannot do a freaking handstand. I've been working on this since like 2019, trying to do a handstand. And every year I'm like, this is the year, this is the year. And the same thing with pull-ups. This is the year I'm going to do pull-ups. This is the year I do pull-ups. And then I injured myself both times with my back and then my shoulder from doing pull-ups and handstands. But it's something that I've always wanted to do. And I've been working on for the longest time. But again, that's something that you can like doing a full push up like a real push up on your hands and feet rather than on your knees is a big deal and when you practice and practice and practice consistently positively thinking you know my body is like i can do this it changes a lot of things it's not again it's not based on what your body looks like and it th- i think that's so cool when you work hard and like achieve something that is not a a weight goal or an aesthetic goal. I think that's really freaking awesome. So as a big sis to you, be gentle with yourself. Talk to a therapist if you need to. I needed to, to get through a lot of my things. Don't have a kid though to get, to have a better relationship with your body. I don't recommend that, (laughs) but it did help me. Uh, I'm not going to lie, but again, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. But 
take care of yourselves, have grace, know that it's going to take a long time, not six weeks <laughs> that you need to eat. You need to respect your body because your body's the only body that you have. So that is all I have for you. I hope you found something interesting or took away something that might change your perspective on what your fitness journey is looking like. So again, as always, make sure to comment something that you learned, something that you took away and make sure to like subscribe or follow or whatever you're, wherever you're watching or listening to this and tell your friends. So, all right, I'll see you next time or here. You'll hear me next time. <laughs>